start and yeah yes priyanka let's start. okay guys let me share my screen please confirm when it is visible Yes, it is. Okay. So today we are going to discuss some of the best practices of Python. So these are the points that we will discuss. So first is style guidelines and code formatting, code documentation, complexity, exception handling, suitable data structure, oops, test cases, and solid principles. Okay. So during the session, if any guys will have any question, uh, please feel free to ask. OK, so first one is style guidelines. So uh, when we are writing the code, uh, most of the times we just focus on the solution. So we have a problem, and uh, we just focus on the solution. So we don't uh, focus on the style guidelines that uh, python recommend so what are those guidelines so in ppd i'm also linking some links uh, that you can see and uh, see what uh, python suggested uh, guidelines style guidelines for, for the code so let me show you an example so for example if we are we are writing any code for example I'm writing number equal to one, two, three, two, three. So it is looking fine. So, but according to Python guidelines, so when we are we are assigning a variable, so there should be a space between operator. Okay. So both are looking same. So and will not affect the output, but it is not recommended in Python to do so. So line number two is looking better than line number one. So it is one of the guidelines that Python suggests, and some of some of our other guidelines. Okay. So these are the official documentation of Papet. So what is Papet? So Papet uh, basically provide the style guidelines. So what guidelines we should keep in mind during writing a code. So these are many. We can go through one by one. You can check it on your end. So for example, indentation. So when we what we do when we write any function, we define a function in a one line. So rather than we can also uh, make use of indentations for example So what do we do? We do like this. So rather than we can do like, we can split the line. Like this and write the function definition inside that. So there are many guidelines we can follow. So we just should not focus on the solution. We should also follow the guidelines that Python suggested. So the purpose behind this is this is this will result into better code readability. So there are some other guidelines. You can go one by one. So here is maximum line length. So by default, uh, according to Papet, so that support um, uh, a line should uh, only contain up to 79 characters. So if it is taking long, then we should split it. Yeah. 
are so like when uh, we are writing the code uh, first we should uh, decide so what style guideline we are uh, taking so for example uh, by assigning uh, variable so if uh, you are using snake case then in the entire project or entire core base you should uh, use snake case and you if you are you decided to use camel case then entire project will uh, should include uh, camel case so this this should not happen like uh, somewhere we are using camel case and somewhere we are using uh, snake case so same in the case of string so if we are using double quotes we should use double quotes so if you are we are using single quotes we should use single quotes in the entire code base okay so apart from there uh, there are some other guidelines like naming convention so for example if we are naming and uh, assigning any variable for example a equal to one two three so that does not make any sense so what is say here so rather than if we can uh, put like this number equal to one two three so from the variable uh, we can see that it is no, it is holding a number value okay so most of the time we use like x a for, so for example in python uh, when we are iterating through loop so what we do like uh, for x in some list or some any uh, data type so what is x that does not make any sense so rather than x we should uh, make a useful naming convention for example i'm going to define a list which is holding numbers okay so when we are at, at writing through so rather than x we can use for number in numbers means the number is holding a single number so it is making sense rather than we are using x okay so from here we cannot decide so what is x holding is so these are the some points we should keep in mind also if you want to go through other points you can follow this documentation the papet official documentation any questions so far not for me prem kush no okay. from my side okay so also i forgot uh, so during the imports so when we are in, uh, importing any module so keep in mind uh, we should uh, import only that uh, thing that we are going to use okay so for example sometimes we do like for in case of pandas import for example in pandas you are just using uh, pandas cs read csv for example so you are not using any other functionality from pandas but you are you are importing entire uh, pandas modules so which is wrong so we can use like this from pandas import read csv okay so that is better because when we are uh, importing entire module so it will take some time to import entire module but uh, we are using only one function from pandas which is read csv so import only those functions and classes which we are going to use not the entire module okay or so the last point is comments so it, right, when you are writing any code so make sure you are writing uh, the required comments from that particular code uh, do not use unnecessary comments for example it's a number and if you are writing so we don't need to do 
this because uh, from the variable we can see that so it is holding a number value so we don't need to write a comment for that okay any question oh, no no okay the next is code formatting so what is that so for example as we discussed previously so we should uh, follow the style guidelines uh, but in case for example you are dealing with huge code base so that is lacking uh, style guidelines so one thing you can do like uh, you can go one line by line and check uh, like if the that is following the style guidelines provided by python or not so but that will take so much time so in that case uh, we can make use of formatters so what does formatter do so formatter will automatically format your code so for example so in this case if i'm not putting any space between uh, variable assignment the formatter will automatically put that space okay and also if uh, i'm defining a function uh, with a uh, line more than 79 characters so it will uh, split that line okay let me show you an example so basically uh, there are two formatters mainly used in python one is black and auto path right so i mostly used black so let me show you an example first uh, first of all, of all we need to install that uh, formatter we can install like uh, if install black to make use of black so we have to run first black then we have to provide a python file path of python file so it is in my current directory which is sample.py okay so before uh, we can take a look like uh, there is a no space between a variable assignment but after uh, running the formatter we can see a space okay also for example if I'm declaring any dictionary, It's not very long so as you can see 
so the dictionary was taking very long line so it formatted that dictionary and formatted in, in this way so that is looking much better than the previous one so if there is any situation like uh, we have a huge code base and we cannot format uh, uh, any line one by one then in that case we can make use of uh, for code formatters so in that case we used black so also uh, black provides some other option for example in my case uh, my virtual environment is also in this current directory for example you want to format uh, only sample.py so by default uh, for example if i want to format uh, all the files under current directory so we can make use of dot black dot so after that it will format all the python files existing in the, this current directory so in this case it will also format virtual environment and uh, for that we don't need to do anything so virtual for virtual environment we don't need to do any formatting so for that what we can do black dot exclude so we can exclude folder which we don't want to format. So it will exclude VNV folder. Apart from that, it will format all the files existing in current directory. Okay. So for example, if formatter will be not there, then we have to do these kind of things manually. So which is very time consuming. Okay. Uh, auto puppet is also used for formatting, but there are some kind of difference between black and auto puppet. So for example, so if the function definition is taking long so what black will do, will do so black will format like this the parenthesis will be from come on come on up front so but in case of auto puppet so it will format like this the parenthesis will be shifted to end but there is no huge difference between black and our auto puppet. But I recommend to use black. Any questions so far? No, that's it. Okay, the next is code documentation. So when we are writing code, so it is necessary to document our code. So what is the purpose of documentation? So for example, in future, so if any other developer is going to work on that project, so it would be easy to understand the code base for that developer. So but most of the time we avoid this thing uh, we we most of the time we we are not uh, writing comment so but we should do that so also from uh, what we do like uh, in the beginning of code we don't write any comment or documentation and we say like uh, after doing implementation we will do but uh, we never do again so it is necessary when you are writing any function any class so before writing any code functionality so it is necessary to first write uh, documentation and then start the other statements so let me show you an example how we can write that So for example, if we are defining any function, so let's say we are going to define some function. Uh, 
So from the function, we can, so it's a sample function. So from the function itself, we can say that like uh, this function is going to sum of two numbers. Okay. So if the function is uh, describing describing the functionality itself, uh, then we can avoid the doc string. So otherwise we can uh, write. So for example, if we have to write a documentation for this function, so how we can write? Either we we have two options. Either we can start with the triple quotes, single triple quotes, or a double triple quotes. So I'm starting with single triple quotes. So first we have to mention so what this function will do. first we need to write so what is what what this function is going to do so after doing that we have to mention the parameters it will going to take so first parameter it will take number one so in the bracket we can show that what would be the type of number one so it would be int okay so after that, we uh, we can define some description about this parameter. So what this pa parameter is, for example, So after uh, giving detail about parameters, we can we have to give detail about return time, return information. So what is going to return? So it is going to return the variable total. So which is which would also be int. So this is the uh, perfect documentation of any function. We have to write like this. So in the future, if any other developer is going to work on this function or modify this function, so he can write the documentation of this function. So what is function really going to do? I'm also adding links, uh, useful links that I find very informative. You can click on these links and at, I recommend to go at least one and see like how we can write a doc string and comments for uh, different functions, classes and modules. Okay. So as we can see, so here we don't need to write any kind of comment. So, so from the variable itself, we can see that like uh, what it is the total, what is total holding. So we don't need to mention a comment for this. Now the last one is type hinting. Does anybody know about type hinting? What is type hinting in Python?
I mean, you are asking about uh, type conversion. No, no. Type conversion is different thing. Okay. It's type hinting. Actually, in type hinting, we just try to provide information about the return type or about a given about the data type of a particular variable. Yes, correct. So, uh, our, most of the time we also ignore that. So we should also use that. Python also recommended to do type hinting. I remember uh, type conversion and type hinting. These two are different things. So what is type hinting? So for example, so uh, type as Muhammad said. So type hinting basically when we do type hinting. So basically, we are going to tell that. So what type of value that any particular function, uh, sorry, any particular variable is going to hold, or uh, and uh, what type of a value that any particular function is going to return? Okay. For example. For example, I'm assigning any value. Okay. So that is the sample value. For example, in our code base, so some values can be dynamic. So for example, if I'm assigning it to equal to any kind of value, so that for example, user will put okay. So during the variable assignment, so how we do a type end? We we have to use colon and we then we have to write the type. So what type of value this variable is going to hold? So here we can we are saying that the val the value variable will hold the integer type. So the use of uh, type hinting to make the better code readability. So that is the purpose of type hinting. Also remember one thing. So type hinting is not restricting. For example, so if I said like uh, it is going to hold the integer value. So that does not mean like we cannot assign a string value to this variable. Because uh, as we know, Python is dynamic typing. So so it uh, type hinting didn't uh, res restrict the type so if i'm i am writing writing integer here so we can also assign string or any other flow but what are the, what is the actual purpose of type hinting so this variable is uh, assigned in order to hold a integer value only so if we in the future if we are going to assign any other type of value so it may cause the error so we should uh, keep in mind so typing hinting basically is used for better code readability so if uh, any for example if any other developer is going to read it so he can have an idea so value should be integer not any other kind of value so there are different uh, type hinting for different kind of values. For example, let us let take an example of this function. So here I'm uh, defining that. So this some function is going to take number one and number two of the type integer. So make sure like uh, you are providing these correct types so if you will provide any other kind of uh, for example if number two is uh, type hint of number two is integer but we are uh, providing it a string then this line will throw an, an error so there are different kinds of type hinting for example so if I I have to type in for a return value of this function, how we can do that? So 
So this indicate that this function is going to return the integer value. So that is the way we can define type hinting for functions, parameters, variables. So it is a good practice. We always make use of type hinting for better code readability. Any question? No pain question. Okay. Okay. The next is score complexity. Uh, so I'm here. I'm not going to discuss about time complexity and space compl complexity. But I will go to discuss about two types of complexity, uh, which we usually deal in our code base. So first one is cyclomatic complexity. So what is that? So as this statement, the cyclomatic complexity is count of number of decision in program. So what does that mean? Number of decision means number of your decision making statements and the number of branches. For example, if I'm writing any function, So cyclomatic complexity is referred to number of decision making statements in any program, any function, any class. So here we can see that. So we are using num uh, these numbers of decision making statements. Like usually in simple words, we can say that if else statements. So as the number of if, if, if else statements will grow, the higher will be higher will be the cyclomatic complexity so so when we are writing any code so we should keep in mind we have to make use of less number of decision making statements and also loops statement so for example what is the formula of that to calculate the cyclomatic complexity it is p plus one so where is p of p is the number of nodes that contain conditions or loops so in here we can see that this is the first condition one cyclomatic complexity one for this one for this so we are not going to count for else because it's a complete block so if I, it, in Python we say it's if elif else. So if we have to calculate cyclomatic complexity, so what it will be? So where is sum of these numbers? So now sum of 
decision making statements which are three and the total will be four so in python so the max cyclomatic complexity uh, would be 10 so if if any code base or any function or if any module is has complexity uh, greater than 10 so we can say that it's a complex code and we have to re reduce that complexity so it, we should keep in mind we should have used less number of decision making statements and loops so higher the number of decision making statements and the loops the higher will be the complexity of that program so the next is cognitive complexity so so basically cyclomatic complexity deals with the test coverage for example if higher will be the cyclomatic complexity so it will be tough to test that program so because there will be higher number of decision making statements and we have to write test case for each of the decision making statement so Cognitive complexity uh, deals with the readability of code from human behavior. So, for example, there may be some example. So, there for that, it, cyclomatic complexity and cognitive complexity can have the same value. But uh, in that case, so for example, if let me show you an example. okay so these are two functions okay so both of uh, complexity cyclomatic complexity four and but we can see in example two the function get words it's looking better than example one but they have same cyclomatic complexity so here we can say that uh, like uh, from the cyclomatic complexity we can say that uh, they this function these both functions are equal have equal complexity but that is not true so where cognitive complexity takes place so cognitive uh, complexity uh, calculate complexity like uh, from the readability perspective okay so also second thing so when we are making uh, making any nested condition for example so here we are making nested if condition but according to cyclo cyclomatic complexity so its value would be one but according to cognitive complexity so if any if there is any nested statement so its value would be two not one so according to cognitive complexity the total complexity is one plus two three plus four plus five so it would be five not four Also keep in mind when we are using nested statements, decision making statements or loops, so they will rise in higher complexity. So also use less number of nested statements. I'm also adding link for that below. Uh, it is very useful. You can go through that and read more about what is cyclomatic complexity and how does it work and what is cognitive complexity. Okay, so for example, uh, I'm going to tell you some of the things that by using we can reduce the complexity for example if you 
you have number of for loops or while loops and you you have to uh, eliminate some of the loops so python provides some of the built in functions also if you want to reduce complexity so most of the time use python's built in functions because they are built using c language so it is which is fast as compared to our own customized functions so i'm going to tell you some of the functions which we you can use in order to eliminate or reduce the first is filter map So you should have knowledge about these three built-in Python function. So by using this, you can reduce the number of loops in your Python code. I'm not going to tell about these functions. Uh, you can uh, read about your own end. But these are very helpful functions. They have different kind of functionality. You can read about that. OK. And if you are if you want to reduce the decision making statements which are if else, then you can make use of dictionary. For example, name is okay, and you are conditioning like this if name is equal to then do this and if. I'm going to and if So rather than doing that, so we can do a simple thing. We can make use of a dictionary. If name is X, Y, Z, so age will be 32. So if name is A, B, C, so age would be 30. And if name is Six something is good with 33. So now, what do you can do that you can name eliminate this? Age is 32. So we don't have to use the if elif conditions just for assigning age. So these are the things we can use in order to reduce loops and uh, if else conditions. Any other question for me? Okay. okay. So now we are going to discuss about exception handling. So basically, normally what we do, like uh, we put our entire code, which is going to run in a try block, and uh, if, if there is exception, we are we will catch exception in accept block. But which is wrong? So we should keep only that code code in try block. So for which we are not sure if in in future if it is it will going to if it is going to work or not. For example, 
so but basically we usually do so for example i'm assigning any variable okay So here, what we are doing, we are handling a zero division error, which is correct. But uh, when we are writing any code in a try block, so we should write only that code for which we are not sure. So, but here we, what we are doing, like we are also keep, keeping number one and number two variable in a try block. So that means, uh, so which is wrong because we are sure like, uh, number one and number two variable are going to have all the values so for that we do not uh, need to handle any exception so for what actually we need to handle exception for this operation which is so which could lead if the number two will equal to zero so we should have to only keep that line of code and try block not the entire code ways okay so if uh, any other developer is reading code so he can see that like uh, this statement in future this statement uh, can be can throw an exception so it is good practice to keep only those lines of code in a try block for which we are not showing like whether they will run successful or not okay so have you used try except or else anybody so mainly what what kind of blocks we mostly used that is try except try except finally okay try except catch so have you used try except or else block no uh, i only use try except Okay, we also have a third block which is else any guys have an, have any idea so when will else block run i think that after both try or accept fails no okay so s block will run only if try block will run successfully okay so for example so as i said previously uh, keep only that code in try block which is going to throw may may throw an exception or not so for example if my try blocks will run successfully so what i can do i can print output Okay, so here you can see else block didn't, didn't run. So, but if I instead of zero, I'll be there. My S block is running. So, for example, if you have any other code, so what we usually do, so we do. So in drive block, we also do this these kind of things. But rather than we can make use of else block. So if this block will run successfully, we can do other functionality in else block rather than in drive block. Okay.
Do you any guys have used decorators for for exception handling? So we I have used ones, but uh, means it's uh, it was long time ago. I'm not remembering the exact functioning. Okay, let me show you an example. So rather than so, for example, we may have a situation. So where we need to put all the codes under try block. So for example, in many cases, for example, if we have any one or two statements, we have to put those all the statements in try block. So instead of writing try and accept for everywhere, we can make use of decorators. So how does that work? Let me show you. these are the decorators i used in my recent project so it is for uh, handling exception that is that are occurring in method class method so basically this, this is a decorator for uh, used to handle exception for function okay so instead of putting try except in every function so I make you I make a decorator so which will make use of try except and run that function in a try block and if there will be any exception so it will log that exception and for example name the function like in that particular function this exception is happened okay so after that I'm going to decorator a function for which I need to handle exception so these kind of decorators we can use. So we can make use of code of reusability. So this uh, decorator is for handling exception for methods. So we also know that a method works better differently rather than function. So we can make use of uh, these kind of decorators. So we have to write less code. Okay, also the last one. Try statements that result in least exceptions. So write such kind of statements for that you don't have, have to handle exceptions. So let me show you an example. And anybody tell me so what will be going to next so is that run successfully or through an, an error Am I audible? Yes, Pankaj, you are audible. Just can you reiterate again what you said? So I'm defining a dictionary here, OK? Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to fetch the value for the, this key, triple mm -hmm. Y. Mm -hmm. So what will happen? I think that it should uh, return none because uh, it's not found so it should have none okay so but in that this case it uh, will not return true for example 
so if we are going to fetch the key value using square brackets and if that key does not exist so it will throw an error key error okay, okay. yeah so like this okay for in such situation so there is a first solution we can use for example we can make use of a try okay and uh, if uh, we know like accept key error if there will be any key error if key is not found okay we can assign age equal to none so that is the first solution that we can use okay mm. but here we are making use of try accept block okay mm. but rather, rather than we can do also one thing we can use dictionaries get method yeah okay so what that method will do so if key is not found so by default it will return none okay so we don't have to handle exception for this so we can make uh, use these kind of methods in order to reduce uh, try accept block okay So this is all about exception handling. If you guys have any question, then please let me know. Uh, well, I don't have any question. Maybe others might have. Okay. Okay, the next is suitable data structure. So in Python, what we usually do, we we have a if we have a condition where we need to store most of the much data so what we usually do we make use of list okay so so we use uh, tuples and sets in very uh, least cases but we should not do that so if you think you have a situation so where your data will not be changed or updated so rather than using list make please make use of tuple so as we know tuple is immutable so if any data will go to tuple so anybody will not able to change that data or add that data so which is very secure so it is very secure so you might have seen example for example when we are making any database connection using python and we are fetching some data from database so you might have seen that that data will come in the form of tuples because if we are fetching data from database so it is necessary no will be able to change that data so data should come as it is that was in database database so also if there is a situation for example uh you are using list okay and uh, that is containing duplicate values and uh, we are making some other functionality to remove those duplicates so instead of uh, using list we can make use of sets so as we know set does not contain any duplicate value okay in in that kind of situations we can use sets because if there there will be any duplicate value so set will automatically remove that so we don't need to do anything in order to remove that duplicate values so make sure when you are using any data type or data structure so you should use correct type of data structure so we should not always sticking up with the list okay so oops in oops i will only discuss about encapsulation so what we mostly do so when we are defining class and uh, class variables or instance variables or methods so all the variables we define are public so in where uh, so i have in most of the less cases where we define private or protected variables 
so if you think there is a variable which should not be changed outside the class then we should define it as a private variable okay let me show you an example I'm going to create an instance. So at this point, all is looking fine. So we are getting, the end user is getting salary. So what if is going to do like this? Even dot. So end user changed salary from this figure to this figure. So which should which should not happen. So we should design a class in that way. So for salary, the end user can only access salary and cannot change the salary. So for that, what we can use, we can make use of private attributes. So how we declare private attributes? by using double underscore okay so now i out now i declared a salary as a private attribute okay so for example now there is no attribute like salary so if end user want to access the salary we have to make use of this method get salary okay but what if he will try to modify that salary he will be not able to do that reason the salary has the same value as it was initial so end user will be not able to change the salary outside the class so also we can do one thing we can make use of property
Okay. Now, user will be able to get the salary, but not able to modify that salary. So, if we have any kind of situation where we know, like we this attribute should not be accessible or should not be updated outside the class, we should uh, make it as a private attribute. We should not always like. Uh, make all of the each attribute uh, as a public is it fine yes okay also the last one static methods and class methods maybe you guys have heard about that uh, we should also make use of static methods so static methods have nothing to do with objects so as we know like if we define any ob uh, method so the first parameter it will takes self which is object itself mm -hmm. so basically every method in a class is associated with object but the static method is that method which is not associated with any kind of object. We can use it as a normal function that we use in Python. For example, if you have any situation, you want to define a normal Python function, you cannot do that in class. So rather than you can use a static method, which is not associated with any object. So second is class method. So if you are performing any kind of functionality that is going to associate with class itself, then rather than using method, normal method, use class method. Let me show you example. for example if i want to change the value of total so rather than assign doing it with the normal method we can use class method by using this so if this method will run so it will change the value of total variable for all the instances okay yeah, so yeah. Okay. Uh, I, yes. I have uh, what are the property decorator do in the class? Okay. Can you repeat? Uh? Sure. So, for example, if I remove that, so we can say that salary here is a method. Okay. okay. So, so salary here is a method. So, if I want to get salary, okay. So I have to make use of parentheses in order to call that method, right? Yeah. Okay. So here we can see clearly that the salary is a method of employee class, right? Yeah. Okay. But when we are using property, So basically, property is using for encapsulation. So end user will not know the internal details. Okay. Now we know that if I 
still use the round parenthesis okay so what does that mean okay so i don't have to use the round brackets okay so here here you can can you tell me like for example if you don't know the code about that class so can you tell me like salary is a method or a salary is instance variable can you tell that not at all yes that is the purpose of property so we can hide the internal details so for example if if you will think like a salary is instance variable and you will try to modify that okay so, so rather than modifying the existing salary, you are creating any uh, new variable, instance variable salary, but it will not override this variable, private variable. So that is the purpose of property. Property is like a part of encapsulation. So we are hiding the internal details. So because uh, end user will not able to know like a whether a salary is a method or an instance variable or a class variable. Okay, one more question. Yeah. Okay, uh, with the property decoder, uh, can we uh, pass the attribute in the function? Like uh, uh, when we are calling here, even dot. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Achha, you can, okay, you are saying like, uh, for example, if. Yes, yes. From outside, uh, we want to, uh, I want to pass the um, variable from outside. Uh, is, it, is it possible? No, I don't think it's not possible. Okay, so for example, if I'm okay, fine. yeah, this is not mm, this will not work in case of property. This will not work. So basically, we use property so where uh, where we are returning any private variable we are uh, returning any existing instance variable in that case we use property okay so for example uh, i have a case so, so let's forget about that so for example i have a case so where uh, end user want to access the salary but as we know we cannot access the private attributes or side the class then how we can do that so first example is we can make a method and I return the salary, okay? But in that that case, the end user will be able to know that like, uh, uh, um, so the salary is a method of an employee class. But if I will do it by using property, then the internal details will be hiding. So the end user will not able to know like whether it is a method or instance attribute or a class attribute. So that is the purpose of property. Thank you, Blanco. So, any other question? Uh, uh, yeah, one more. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, different different between private and uh, protected variable in class. Okay. So, private uh, at variable or attribute is attribute which we can access only within this class. Okay. Okay. But public, uh, uh, we cannot access it outside the class. Okay. Let me. Yeah. Okay, so that is the public. Hmm. And uh, is there any, any concept of uh, protected, uh, protected variable? Hmm. Let me show you. So per protected attribute we can make using single underscore okay public attribute is uh, attribute which we can access within the class outside the class or in any class which is inheriting this class in simple words in base class yes. so private attributes we can only access within this class we cannot access it outside the class or in any other base class 
or any sorry in any child class okay okay so protected attribute we uh, we can access uh, within the class and in child class but we cannot access outside the class so that is the difference between pri private and protected attribute private attribute cannot be accessible in child class but uh, protected attribute can be can be accessible sorry thank you ma'am yeah oh. uh, basically uh, protected can be accessible in child class but uh, private is not yes okay thank you ma'am so now test cases so when we are doing any functionality so so it is a good practice to write test cases and what we usually do so when we write some logic we only test that logic on positive test cases okay for example if i'm writing any function okay so i will check the like uh, for example i provided a input and uh, and that function gave me output so we can say that like uh, this uh, functionality is working okay but in future so there may have different scenario where that particular logic can fail so but how we can test that like uh, so using test cases we can test our functionality on the different use cases okay so for example if my con code contains multiple if conditions okay so but we usually don't check uh, our functionality for each of the statement okay so we check for the few of the statements and we state that like uh, this is working okay fine so using test cases we we are able to test our cases on each use cases so that will result in result into less number of errors in production okay so there are mainly there there may have different kind of testing but uh, this two types of testing is important like one is unit testing and second is regression testing so what is unit testing so for example <clears throat> you are doing any kind of task so which are uh, which is making use of two or more than two functions okay so unit testing is testing we are uh, testing a unit of code for example if my code is make calling two functions from any file so but uh, if i want to test any particular one function okay so it it is performing as expected according to the provided input or not that will that we call as a unit testing okay for example for example let's So this class is containing two methods method one and method two okay so but in unit cases for example if i want to test only method one so it is working as expected or not okay so that will call as a unit testing i'm where i'm only testing a unit of a whole code so from from this entire class i'm testing only this testing only this method so it will call as unit testing and second one is regression testing so regression testing is testing uh, we do for example your code was working fine and uh, there was a new requirement and do, you did some changes so after that after doing some changes so we have to make sure that so all the existing functionality is working fine so that we called 
it has a regression testing where we test all the functionality is working or not as it was working previously with the new changes that is called regression testing so python provide many frameworks for uh, writing test cases so so it is good practice for example if you writing any function for doing some functionality so after writing that function and checking it on your end so it is good practice to write a test cases for that uh, function uh, try to test it with different kind of inputs so if it is working for different kind of inputs so so there are less chances that uh, it may cause error in the future so so mainly we use pytest pytest is a python framework this is used to write test cases for uh, functions classes and other modules also i provided the uh, link for official documentation of pytest you can look over there test is test cases are very good practice we should make use of them because what we usually do we didn't test our functionality on many different cases so that is the reason for example sometime the thing was working on our end but like in future we face some issue so that is the reason because we didn't test the tested that functionality on different use cases any question for test cases No. Okay. Okay. The last one is solid principles. So I'm not really going to discuss about this because these are very brief topics. But like you guys should uh, take a look into that. Like uh, because before taking a look into solid principle, uh, at least we have some basic knowledge about all the hoops concept. So. Solid principles basically approach uh, that we should use while writing functions, classes, or uh, any other logic. So, uh, so S stands for single responsibility principle. O stands for open closed principle. L stands for Liskov substitution principle. I stands for interface interface segregation principle. D stands for dependency inversion principle. So that is a separate topic, but I include you guys must have a take a look into that. It's a really interesting topic. So in future, we can have a different session on solid principles because it's a very brief topic. So it will take much time. Does anybody know about solid principle or or ever heard about that? No, no, I haven't heard. Okay. Then you should probably take a look into that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. So that's it for today's session. So any question for me? Hello. Okay, after the call, I will share the same PPT with you guys. And you can take a look and uh, can take a look into the provided links that is that are very informative. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you.